Um, we'll go into a uh, reading of the land acknowledgement. I'll go ahead and read that. It says, we meet today in the community of Iowa City, which now occupies the homelands of Native American nations to whom we owe our commitment and dedication. The area of Iowa City was within the homelands of, of the Iowa, Meskwaki, and Sauk. And because history is complex and time goes far beyond memory, we also acknowledge the ancient connections of many other ind indigenous peoples here. The history of broken treaties and forced removal that dispossess indigenous peoples of their homelands was and is an act of colonization. Genocide and we cannot erase. We, we implore the Iowa City community to commit to understanding and addressing these injustices as we work together toward equity, restoration and res reparations. Now we'll move to the approval of the meeting minutes from July 21st. Motion to approve. Seconded. Uh, yes. Commissioner Dillard. Yes. Commissioner Gatula. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Harris. Yes. Commissioner Rivera. Yes. Motion passes 6-0. Okay, um, we will now move to public comment of items not on the agenda. First, we'll start with um, people on Zoom. You could just raise your hand, there we go. Alicia. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, thank you. Uh, Felicia Paper, I live in Iowa City. Uh, I wanted to briefly comment on the current events regarding the discussion of resignation chair Ali. I think you all on the commission do really good, difficult work, and I don't really want to belabor the issue or imply that this I think takes that's precedent. Item eight. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. that is on the agenda. Oh, okay. Sorry. Thank you. Anyone else from Zoom who would like to jump in? I think there's another person somewhere. Noah. Hello, Hi. can y'all hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, uh, so the leadership thing with ML, that's on the agenda later, right? Yes. Okay, so I actually have something else to talk about today, uh, just briefly. Uh, so, um, Sadie McDowell, uh, technically still an employee of uh, ICF, the fire department at Iowa City, uh, filed a lawsuit today, uh, the describing uh, a deeply racist, misogynistic, homophobic, transphobic fire department. I just like, uh, I don't know if y'all are aware, but just like encourage y'all to read that uh, complaint that just was filed today. And the city uh, completely did not take that complaint serious. Like she filed complaints and they told her they could start an investigation. They didn't even hire the investigator until 44 days after like her initial complaint, they said that it would take a while and they didn't do any steps to investigate that for well over a month. And they have done nothing to support her and she has essentially been forced out of work because she is not, it is not safe for her to return to work because the city chose to keep the racists, keep the sexists, keep the homophobes on the force to allow them. And one, uh, uh, Rachel Kilburn, like, when when uh, McDowell gave the complaint, said, well, he wants to do fire these people as if that's somehow ridiculous to fire hateful, unsafe people from the fire department. I, that's, I just want to make sure let y'all know the, how shitty the fire department is too, just like the police department. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on Zoom? Okay, we'll move to the public in the room. Oh, was there someone else on Zoom? Okay. We'll move to the public um, comments in the room. Okay, if not, then we'll move on to our first agenda item, which is... Just go to the podium. Oh, yes. And state your name. Hi, my name's Ned. Um, I'm just point of order, I was wondering if we could increase accessibility for these meetings past and present by assigning someone possibly paying them to 
um, create a transcript of the actual meetings, not just the agenda and not just the minutes, but the actual like who said what and who responded in what way. Um, I know that you can see the YouTube videos, but they're very, very difficult to sit through. Um, even if you can actually hear and read. Um, I asked somebody on Facebook group and they were able to do it quite easily with an app. I'm not techie like that, but um, just for example, I couldn't understand what Noah was saying and I'm sure that no one could understand it from a recording. So that's just a request. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public that would like to comment? Okay, we will move on to item six. Um, it says follow up on joint work session with the city council. Um, first, we open to public comment. Anyone want to comment on the work session on Zoom? Okay, um, in the public. Okay, commissioners. Um, do we want to talk about this item right now? Is uh, is V here um, on the on the Zoom? To... Yes. What about Larry? Yes. Yeah. Can you all hear me, this is Larry? Yes, we can hear you, Larry. Okay. Hello, this is V. Hi, V. Hello. And then Annie's in person. Now we see Annie in the audience. Is there anyone on from Think Peace? Okay. This is Commissioner Rivera. Um, I, I guess my initial question is um, for uh, those who drafted the proposal um, to be our facilitators, if there are any updates to um, to present yet, or or, or if uh, we're waiting on a little bit more time. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, commissioners. Uh, we thought uh, we we have met earlier today um, with Kearns and West and, and our local team, um, and uh, think he's just there were some people in transit, so we didn't really connect, but wanted to say that uh, felt like we had a lot of positive feedback. Uh, we've taken notes and have already started uh, another draft that includes um, kind of some of the items that council had indicated in terms of, you know, just creating some clarity around um, what types of facilitation and who is doing what, where, um, and being a little bit more explicit about the community involvement um, and the uh, coordinator position, turning that into more of a full-time thing. And, also just wanted to say uh, that we would we will reach out to Stephanie and talk a little bit more about that position, given that we just recommended that it be created in uh, the her department, but obviously need uh, some time to talk with her about that. And really, I think overall just felt like it was a positive meeting. We have notes that we're working on. Um, we have started a draft and um, feel like we can, you know, kind of come back with something that is with the count, like a little bit clearer um, distinctions with the council. Um, and then based on some of the feedback that we've had from you all, uh, Kearns and West has kind of gone through as well. And um, we've modified it a little bit to see like, you know, how do we make a little bit more local components, um, particularly around the fact finding. Um, so appreciate the work that they've done in doing that and also, um, just reducing kind of their footprint a little bit so that we can have more local representation. Uh, those have been really great conversations and always appreciate Larry and his team, you know, helping us think through that. Um, but yeah, we don't have necessarily something to, you know, provide you that was only, you know, 24, 30 hours ago. Um, but we are, we're already working on it, I guess is what I would say. And I'm happy to have others jump in. Hey, this is Larry. I'll uh, appreciate everything you shared there. And commissioners, uh, the only thing I would add is that it was very important to Kearns and West to be responsive to all of the input that you all gave and the city council. And so, uh, as we indicated, you know, we are um, in a place now where if the budget were to 
move forward as we have revised it, uh, Kearns and West's overall portion of that budget would be less um, for a variety of reasons. We've been able to, to make some modifications that make that so. And, you know, we also want to be clear that <clears throat> we see ourselves in a, a specific lane, uh, so to speak, of this process on the, on the fact finding chiefly um, available. Sure you know, you we, can't hear you very No, we can't hear you. It's cutting out, Larry. Oh, I'm very sorry about that. How about now? Any better? No? That is better. Oh, okay. I'll just speak up a little bit. I was just saying that we understand that the primary lane we're going to be occupying is on the fact finding side. And so we've kind of read the uh, revised budget. It sounds like you're going into a tunnel a little bit. Okay. <laughs> um, let sorry. Me let, me, um, let me reconnect. I'll be right back. Thank you. Yes, go ahead. Uh, yeah, why well, can why well, reconnect? He's back. Larry, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you all hear me? Yes. yes. I really apologize. I don't know why there was uh, an issue there. Um but just to summarize, you know, we we feel strongly that that we want to play a supporting role here and so I think we've recalibrated things budgetarily and and you know, process-wise to make sure that the driving forces are local, that we're supporting chiefly the fact-finding piece and, and available to support throughout, uh, but focused on that fact-finding piece. I, I'll leave it there for now, thanks. Thank you. Annie? <clears throat> and I guess we'd wanna say that if you have <clears throat> other specific things that you've been thinking about since that meeting, that you would want us to be thinking about or be sure to integrate or clarify, we're definitely open to that. So we have the list. We took notes of what, what everyone said. We've begun changing things, but we are open to hearing what you have to say. And we realize that there's a short timeline and would be aiming for the next meeting. Thank you for that clarification. Um, I do want to add for me, um, so a few months ago, we did make a list of community partners, organizations that we reached out to, to see if they were interested in working with the commission. And based off what council said on Tuesday and also other conversations with them, I think it'd be helpful if we thought of a list uh, out, of, out of that docket. I think it was about 40 organizations or so that we could look into reaching out to and seeing if there's a space for them within the proposal or immediately to reach out to afterwards to work uh, directly with the local partners. Um, I can go uh, dig that spot up again. I can't remember the exact meeting, but I think there were like two or three agendas they were in. Yeah, we definitely welcome that. In fact, this was part of our conversation. It's always been a part of our conversation, but more recently when council asked about more community involvement, um, there's always, it's, it's a more and in our perspective. And so we're just, there's always been a place in the budget for community partners, but yeah, we would love to have, you know, some explicit organizations and groups that you all uh, were thinking of. Obviously we have our, our own connections and I'm sure there's overlap there, but um, just wanted to let you know that that is uh, a, it's a budgeted item as well. So oftentimes those things kind of get lost and we just want to be at the forefront. So we'll call that out a little bit more as well, just to make sure that everybody's kind of clear on that point, but would very much so welcome that list. Thank you. I, I think I have that list. Um, so I will try to get that to UV um, after this meeting. Great, thank you. Does anyone else have any other comments on this agenda item? I just wanted to add that on that list, when uh, as commissioners, we reached out to the various com organizations in the community, uh, we did report uh, in the following meetings, uh, many of them that were willing. Actually, most of them that we approached, they gave a positive answer to work with the TRC. 
So, yeah, and we still have that, like you said, even the it's minuted. Yeah. Thank you. I yield. Okay. If no one else has any other comment, we'll move on to item number seven. Ways TRC commissioners can support one another. Oh, we're, we can open this up to public comments. Anyone on Zoom um, that would like to go first? Anyone in the um, audience here that would like to comment on this agenda item? Okay, then we'll move to commissioners. Um, so I requested to include this on um, the agenda today, just because I think that it's worth having a, a the open con honorix conversation um, with one another about how best we can support one another. Um, I would like to start by saying that my care for this community is immense and that my care for each of you is genuine. This has been a really tough several days um, and I don't think any of us will walk out of here feeling that our current situation is fully resolved. Um, and I, I think I want us to be okay with that. Um, my hope for any conversation is that we speak with compassion and listen with our guards down and we work together to find the best path forward for each of us individually and as a group and that we model what we hope to bring to our community. As I've been processing the events of the past week, as, been, as I've been having conversations with commissioners, counselors, and community members, the thought that's kept coming to mind is, what does in this mess of a situation we find ourselves in restorative justice look like? I'll admit that it's still not natural for me to think along the principles of restorative justice. Um, what's more natural for me is to ask the old questions. What rules were violated? Who's really at fault? How can we make sure that this person gets what they deserve? These questions by the societal standards we've all lived in, I think are reasonable questions. The problem is that these questions don't really repair things and they have a bad track record for actually preventing future harms from occurring. As a Truth and Reconciliation Commission, it's essential to proceed as best as we can in adhering to restorative justice principles, which are focus on the harm and the consequent needs of those harmed first of all, but also on those of the community and of those causing harm. Address the obligations that result from those harms, including the obligations of the offending persons, as well as those of the community and society. Use inclusive and collaborative processes. Involve those with legitimate stake in the situation, including those victimized, those offending community members and society and seek to repair the harm and put right the wrongs to the extent possible. Underlying these pr uh, principles, we must begin with a baseline of respect for everyone involved. I wanna acknowledge the complexity of our situation. I don't think that we can honestly say there is a specific singular person who has caused harm or a singular person who has been the victim of it. And that's to be expected. Harm causes harm. And in this community, there are underlying systemic causes that contribute to the divisions that exist. And those causes are what our commission, if successful, can try to discover and address. I think the least helpful question is who started all of this? Bringing it back to restorative justice, our questions ought to be, who has been harmed? What are their needs? Whose obligation is it to address these needs? Who has a stake in this situation? What are the underlying causes of the harm that's been done? What's the appropriate process to involve stakeholders in an effort to put things right and address these causes? I think we'll all know that we've done the process right when we can say that the victims come out of this situation satisfied, that offenders understand and take accountability for the harm they've caused, that the outcome has helped repair the harms done by addressing the reasons for the offenses and the victims and offenders gain a sense of closure and both are reintegrated into the community. What I hope um, to leave with here tonight is to hear what our needs are 
and for us to set up some way to involve those in the community who have been harmed in our process so that we can move forward. I'm confident that we can't know what the right answer to all of this is before we do that, reach out to the community and hear their needs. But I do think with these principles as our North Star, we are doing the best for our community and for one another. Thanks. I yield. Uh, before I go, does anyone else have anything? Go ahead. Um, all right. Um, in terms of ways that TRC commissioners can support one another, I think one thing uh, we can really prioritize is more honesty with one another, but more honesty, not just in how we're feeling in certain moments or if we disagree with something someone said or a decision they made, but also honesty in how we feel this position puts us as a commission, not just today, not just next week not just next month, but at the end of it all. The biggest concern for me right now, if we're not honest with each other on where we feel this puts us, is that it may invalidate all of the work regardless of how successful it is. There is nothing more a detractor loves than to point at key mistakes or key issues and key points of societal strife. And for me, if we are not honest with each other on how this has affected everybody involved, I think we're doomed. So I know in the next agenda item, we'll be addressing it further, but yeah, this has flipped my entire last week. There has not been more than 30 minutes for the last seven days that this topic has not been on my mind. And what doesn't help in terms of feeling supported is that I can't even access the full audio to really learn for myself what happened. All I can rely on is what I hear from person after person after person after person. And I say it that way because we're now to the point where my younger sisters who have only once talked to me about the commission since it started, and it was in the month that we began, even have their own friends texting them and asking them about what's going on. So for ways to support one another, I, I really don't know. Uh, there's, there's a lot, a lot that we need to figure out in terms of these actual tapes, if there's some way that we can hear these things, because if not, we're left in a position where we're trying to answer for or make decisions on things that we don't have any complete take on. It's like, it's hard to defend or say something against a recorded podcast when I can't even say, oh, I know that that's real, or I know that that's not real. I only have one section to go off of. So I just hope that if anyone on this commission, either here or on Zoom or that couldn't make it, has a problem with someone else on the commission or someone else on the community, I think we can best support each other by first remembering it's likely best to just go to that person first and let them know and try to work it out. And if they're not willing, try to get to a third party that can maybe mediate it. But the whole infighting and going to other routes. I'm not blaming anyone specifically right now. I'm just saying for me, the, the route I'm saying we take going forward is that we're first honest with that individual person before we potentially jeopardize more of the mission. And with that, I yield. Quick few wanted to say something? Else? Ways the TRC commissioners can support one another. You need to put your microphone a little closer. First, uh, I would say a better level of professionalism. Uh, I am not used to, I'll say, uh, nicknames and fun stuff all the time when we were dealing with serious matters in business. I feel like that is a first wrong step in wrong direction 
that we are going in when we are taking this too lightly. Now, not that we're saying, I'm saying that we're can, taking everything completely lightly and a lot, of, a lot of hard work isn't done. What I'm saying is this is how we end up in these situations is if we're playing too much. And I don't appreciate that play because I feel like it's dangerous to the cause. Also, ways TRC commissioners can support one another is be here. Right now, we have a lot going on and I don't like the dirt from the bottom of the water to get all messed up by a situation only to now avoid it. I find that to be unprofessional as well. And I think that is exactly how we constantly keep having roadblocks put in front of us. It's not a one person show. It's not an anybody show. It is a commission that we all volunteered for. If it's too hard, too difficult or anything else along those lines, then I guess maybe we need to ask for either more help or another way of going about things. But if we volunteer for a position, it is important to be here for that position. It is important to take that position seriously and is important to not attack each other, period. We might all disagree. We might all have different opinions in every way, shape, and form. But at the end of the day, our goal is to build bridges, not burn them. And we need to make sure that we are working together towards the common goal. I do not want to look silly in front of the rest of the world because we can't, I mean, it goes back to just be professional. That's all. We have too much riding on this. Too many other people have stepped before us and made sacrifices for us to be in this position to take it kind of lightly. Uh, it's upsetting me because I don't, I'm not a complainer, but I've dealt with my own personal issues with being on this commission outside of this commission. And I don't appreciate the hard work effort my family, my business, uh, anything else along those lines being taken so lightly that it doesn't seem to matter very much. It's just like, oh, well, hmm. oh, well, well, no, I, I don't accept that at all. And I feel like going back to the beginning, if we just have a better level of professionalism for each other, we can do a lot better. And we have a responsibility right now to do a lot better and not to give every rock to anybody to throw at us any longer. We have too much going for us. And I have respect for all of you on here. I told you when I first got on this commission, I, I stepped on because I thought, wow, look at them. You know, they're really putting it out there and, you know, they say they need help. So volunteer up, didn't ask for money, go back, review, didn't ask for anything other than what do you need me to do? That's it. Now, if people are overwhelmed, I've still said every time, what do you need me to do? Do you need a location to talk? Do you need anything? I've heard nothing, hardly anything. But then I get, I feel like thrown under the bus in certain situations. I don't like what was in the paper at all. Uh, I, I feel like the wording of it in the paper was, uh, Kind of like, it just didn't, it wasn't genuine. It wasn't real. Uh, and I don't appreciate that at all. I would like us to make better choices for the future on our leadership, which I know is coming up next. And I would like us to work towards the goals that we are here for. And that's it. I feel like that will help us get rid of any extra animosities or anything like that. Stop taking things so personally, even though it is personal to a degree, we all have been suffering and have dealt with hurt, pain, so on and so forth. But we have a job to do and we got to take it serious. When we don't, well, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. That's how I see it. So with that, I yield. I'll take the floor. This is Commissioner Wangui. And what can we do to support each other? And some of it I uh, will be piggybacking on what my fellow commissioners have said. Um, 
One, I appreciate all of you, my fellow commissioners. I've been working with you for more than a year. Somebody said respect. We continue respecting each other. I wasn't able to attend the session that was, that has brought us to this point. But, oh, I got to learn what has developed. And the main, one of the main things that has come out of that is some lack of respect. Then the other word that I heard from you, Commissioner Rivera, is being genuine and authentic as we do this work. So that is also something else we continue going with. And the having conflict among ourselves at the commission, the commission members, is not a surprise. And I remembered this because I'm one of the three commissioners who went through the course by Think Peace. And thank you very much, the city of Iowa City for paying for that course. We went through the history because all of us here have never been in a TRC. So we went through the history of TRCs, not just in the US, but around the world. One of them being from my own country of Kenya after the political violence in 2007. As we went through all that, it reminded me in Iowa City right now in 2022, what we are all struggling with, the TRC just happens to be the human face, the lead of what we are struggling with in Iowa City, which began a long time ago, racial oppression through colonization and slavery. So that reminded me, others have struggled with this and conflict even among the leading face were there. And even when uh, some a few weeks back, when Eduardo Gonzalez and David Ragland, when they came and, and they visited Iowa City, and they were sharing their experiences of working and leading TRCs and facilitating. One of the questions I asked them, uh, how do the commissioners themselves or the members of the task forces that, how do they resolve the conflicts? Because uh, maybe I missed during my course or even as I continue reading on TRCs and task forces on struggling with racial injustice and oppression. I'm still struggling with that answer. How do they resolve conflicts within themselves? Because, and then here we are, before I could have the answer, here we are, with a major concern with ourselves and thinking and discussing how do we move forward with that. So again, what I've said in very many words, conflicts are there, have been there as people struggle with racial oppression. So, and as we continue with this work, it's still, going to be there, but I'd say one, respect fellow commissioners. And we've had a lot of that most of the time. And we can agree 
to continue respecting each other and to be alert and aware. Keep on checking ourselves as I open my mouth. Is it there? Or as I move about my community, am I doing that? Because if I do not do that, ripple effects will happen in our community. Commissioner Traore, you shared about your, about your sister. We're having those ripple effects. I'm having my son too, and a lot of other people asking, well, what's happening to you guys? What are you doing? And then being authentic and being able when we have conflicts to be able, like one of us has said, start with ourselves and try and resolve before we open something that we struggle to close. The other thing I'll add, this is not piggybacking on any of the other remarks, is try not because within this current concern, we have triangulation. We have some within us just having some people not knowing some things that are going on and it's deliberate. So as we move forward, not to have that because it just comes to come back comes back to us negatively. Oh, uh, those are some of the. Then the other thing is our lead our chair and vice chair, continuing to move us on the same page as much as that is possible. And as a TRC, just because the sum total of us is stronger than just one of us at a time. So, for a, for a few months, we have been missing that. And I'm not saying anything that is not visible to anyone who has been present in our meetings because they are public or even going through the videos. But I also remember that it's also challenging because somebody has suggested that there be a transcript. So when we are not on the same page and when and sometimes and we also say some of us when we missed something uh which may have been deliberately done so yeah that's the other suggestion i want for us as we move to move to be to try as much as possible to be on one page I will yield. Um, this is Commissioner Dillard. Um, the first thing that I was thinking about listening to all of my fellow commissioners is that one, we, we owe ourselves a moment to collectively breathe and realize that anything worth doing is going to be hard. And also remember that what we're doing is hard work. It's historical work. It's something that's never do been done in this area. Um, so ways we can support ourselves is just remembering, reminding ourselves this and how important it is that we, what we're trying to do for the community is. Um, I say this as a person who joined this commission, who I really wanted to give people that I work with every single day an opportunity to speak about their truths because it is important, which is why I remain on this commission. Um, I've heard respect. Respect is very important. Professionalism very important. And I think trust, we need to be able to trust each other. It's okay if we disagree in certain ways, as long as we are respectable, as long as we are uh, giving each other an opportunity to have their own words and be able to be able to talk and building upon that trust, we all 
walk out of this room into our own lives every other week. And then we come together for this work, um, which is very important. It's historical. So I think if we can all collectively remember that and to just breathe, I'm saying that for myself, that's how we can care for each other. Would anyone else like to speak? Only other thing I would like to add is I agree with the transcripts. I think that's sad. That's a great idea. So. I also want to add also, as we work with the Iowa City communities, uh, something else I was reminded of as I went through those courses is that conflict as we fight racial op oppression with even among the communities in Iowa City. Uh, it has been there with the uh, with all those TLCs that are going on elsewhere in and out of the US. So uh, just to remind myself that when they happen, even with the communities and the various groups in our city, not to get surprised that they happen, but also to, but also Remember that even when it's happening, it's painful because you're fighting a conflict within, among yourselves and among the communities, even those who are fighting oppression or who are oppressed. And at the same time, you're also trying to, yes, just remember and reminding myself that as I move on and as I work, the conflicts are going to be there. It's not that I'm going to cause them, but they are going to be there. And the important thing is how to navigate even those uh, conflicts within the various groups. I yield. If there's nothing else, we can move on to item number seven. Waste, uh, I mean, item number eight, TRC leadership. And um, we'll start with public comment on Zoom. So if you would like to raise your hand, we'll go ahead and call on you. Looks like Felicia. Hi, thank you. Um, Felicia Paper, Iowa City. I, um, I wanted to comment on um, the discussion of the resignation of Chair Ali. I think you all are doing really good and difficult work and I don't wanna belabor the issue, um, but I did feel compelled to comment and contextualize what we're seeing play out. This ongoing pattern of division tends to get characterized as an intergenerational divide among black community members. A more accurate character, characterization would be a battle between um, prioritizing punishment and control over truth and healing. The struggle between punishment and healing seems to be suspended at this level of politics and civic engagement, but it's really at the root of um, harm that gets replicated at every level of our community. I truly wholeheartedly and maybe naively sometimes believe in the power of healing through truth and reconciliation. And I know that you all do too, and that's why you're here. Um, if I've learned anything from my own involvement in transformative justice and restorative justice processes and activism spaces, it's the issues that seem like a burden and a distraction. The issues that keep coming up over and over that we don't seem to have a good solution for are the issues most important to tackle. It's not the TRC's responsibility to mediate and resolve this conflict that we're seeing play out, but I do wanna invite commissioners and the public to reflect on and keep thinking about the current situation, which is the most recent iteration in a, of a pattern of black activism in our community. I'm keenly aware that black people are, more, are consistently overburdened with solving societal issues that we didn't cause in the first place. I guess I'd just like to open an invitation to shift the narrative of what we're seeing play out over and over and over again and stand up and be brave enough to take on the issue. Whatever the outcome is with Chair Arley's role on the commission, this is a core issue that's not going away and it's gonna just get passed along to the next cohort. I'd also just like to um, say that I appreciate Commissioner Rivera's comments and specifically their honesty and bravery to say that the principles of restorative justice don't come naturally, but that they're, they're trying. I think that we're seeing a division in how we're talking about this issue come down to either people who are committed to fumbling through a transformative justice process and people that are willing to just fall on respectability politics. I also don't think it's appropriate to talk about this without Chair Ali um, present 
and that she needs space to process this right now. The sense of urgency is a tenet of white supremacy and healing takes time. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, can I just do a point of order? Um, is that okay? Oh, wait, so just- I'm, I'm sorry. I, what are you asking? I'm asking, well, a point of order is my understanding of like, this is not related to the discussion, but the process of the, the meeting. So that's a point of order. Can I do that? You're asking if this, what was this discussed is related to the meeting? No, I'm <laughs> sorry. I apologize. I'm just, I'm making a request in order to facilitate the whole agenda of the meeting that in actuality, we have a synopsis of what is being discussed before that we open the discussion because mm -hmm. anyone who hasn't been to every single TRC meeting has no idea what's going on. And there's just really no way for anyone to try and do background research. Like this discussion means nothing to somebody who has not been given the details. I'm wondering if somebody could please summarize what is being discussed before we discuss it. Okay. So that's the point of order. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, is it okay if I do that? Yes, please. I'm going to give as much background as I can based off of what I can actually confirm and know. Um, essentially, there have been many disagreements over the history of the TRC on things such as leadership. Um, as Supervisor Porter is here today, we had a situation last year where we had a vote where we removed Supervisor Porter's chair, but prior to that removal, she resigned. And that was the process in which I became chair and then Commissioner Ali became vice chair. Since then, we have still had uh, some times where we have butted heads with groups in the community on how we run, et cetera. But um, what we're discussing now is the question of leadership coming up again, but also in the sense of how leadership should be acting in the public because of a podcast or two episodes of a podcast that came out in June. They're behind a paywall on Patreon. It's like rock hard caucus. So a member of the community uh, delivered said podcast episode to the home of a uh, supervisor Porter. Not sure who did it, uh, but from there, more people found out as well about this same podcast. And in it, the current chair of the TRC, ML Ali, is known to have said in the snippet, at least that I've heard, things disparaging members of the community, such as Supervisor Porter, but also other members of the community, such as Mr. Townsend. And apparently there are more people named, um, possibly uh, members of the commission itself. But again, I cannot confirm all details. So I'm not going to say that everything happened other than what I know of the references to the two individuals sitting here. And the other issue with learning more is apparently these episodes are deleted. So it's very hard to recover the audio and we're all in the dark and trying to learn more. That's my take on it. Um, and to continue on that, um, it has been suggested that um, our chair um, be be removed from her position and that is what we are have been talking about in this um during this meeting so, so um to continue is there anyone else on um the zoom that would like to comment in the public please raise your hand okay we can move to everyone here in this room oh noah go ahead Okay. Um, you can hear me, right? Yes. Okay, just want to make sure. Uh, sorry. Um, don't really a whole lot to say. Uh, just that I wanted to encourage you all to try your hardest to stick with. Um, restorative justice and as Mr. Rivera pointed out that it is that can be difficult and I just want to encourage you to stick with that and 
I just want to like uh, second uh, Felicia's point that to not make any final determinations on anything regarding Mel without her present and to give her that space to process things. That, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Noah. Anyone else on Zoom that would like to make a pu public comment? Okay, now we can move to everyone in this room. Is there anyone here that would like to make a public comment? Hello, my name is Shaylin Harrington, um, Corville resident, I guess. <laughs> um, I wanna first start by saying that I believe in the TRC and the work that can be done and at its core, its mission of healing and tackling issues. At its core, I, I believe in this work and its, and its power to make change. But with strife, that's nearly impossible, if not at all. When I served on the commission, I was so eager to get my hands dirty and put in that work <laughs> to, to tackle issues, to talk to different groups of people and just uncover things and work with different communities to, to make change, right? But time and time again, distractions got in the way. Interpersonal conflict made hurdles nearly impossible to avoid. Um, and for me, what it comes down to is at its essence, respect. Everyone here and in your discussions about how you can both can all support one another, it, the baseline was uh, respect, respecting one another. Um, with just plain respect, mutual respect, anything can be done. Like work can be productive. But when, when you, it's harder to hear someone say something, even though it might be true, even though their argument might be right, it is harder to hear someone when their tone is nasty or the comments that they make are rude and offensive you know it's really hard to hear someone when that when that takes place during my time on the commission it, it, it was a tough time <laughs> a rocky start um i was chair for a few minutes seven at most right um before a vote took place to take me off of leadership what precedent did that set? I didn't do anything in those seven minutes that I was chair, nor in the months that I was vice chair, right? So for the actions of your current chair to be so vile, to be so nasty and disrespectful, go, go, going back to that respect piece, where does that vote come in at? Because the precedent has already been set leadership needs to be addressed but now it's it's different when an apology comes forward i never got an apology i never got reached out from anybody the three people that are on the council I mean the commission now that were when i was never got an apology i don't need one necessarily but i just want that to be like thought of of, of the history of leadership and how it's been addressed on this commission and understanding that work only gets done when mutual respect exists and that when it comes time for you all to make your decision and it doesn't have to be immediate you know like quick action sometimes is necessary but <laughs> but other times it it's it's, it's something to weigh, but when you weigh it, think of the repercussions 
of the words that were said and the disrespect for other individuals who've put in great work and how Clifton, you you said it like you got thrown under under the bus with all of this. <laughs> you like it comes back to you and you you are blindsided by it all. So that's that's all I wanted to share. I I really from the start been gun ho about this work and I think that you all can do it, but having egotistical like mindsets of power struggle really creates hurdles for you all um and putting pride aside knowing that a title doesn't matter if you're doing the work together it, it's fine <laughs> you know it's seven of you guys eight I don't know how to count right now but, <laughs> but um it's enough of you to know like to call each other out to to be honest, like Traore said, be honest with one another about how you're feeling and understanding like some behaviors are not acceptable. And, and yeah, I don't want to ramble. So <laughs> thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Billy Townsend, 713 Whiting Avenue. There's a couple of things I wanted to address. I was quiet at the last meeting, but after listening to a, a, several of you, I just wanted to make a few comments. I've been on commissions for, well, quite a few years, and we've done a lot of good work here in the community. Um, but it, with this issue, I think it's unfair for all of us to, or all parties involved, to talk about podcasts that no one has heard. You've heard snippets, but... There are two podcasts that every one on the on the TRC commission should hear, and everyone on city council should hear. You cannot judge or make decisions on hearsay. You need to hear them in their completeness, and I think only a male can give permission to put those podcasts back up. So I recommend that you request that, so you can make decisions based on what you hear and what's been said. Also, uh, it was mentioned at the council be meeting by several people that it was unfair to take a vote to, re to remove uh, Chair Ali. As uh, Tashana said, when you first started, it seems, and if I'm recalling correctly, uh, Rice Ann Porter was chair. And then all of a sudden in a meeting, she was voted out. Uh, the vice chair was voted out, and uh, there were, I think, Triari, you were then at the same meeting. So you've already set a precedence for removing chairs when you don't agree with what they're doing or the way they're doing it. Okay. Um, Amel also mentioned Black Voices Project in her podcast and also yesterday at the meeting. And she said yesterday that Black Voices is 75% white. Well, this community is probably at least 75% white. But Black Voices Project is not an elite group. It's an open committee. You're all welcome to attend the meetings. We take on any issue that's brought to us, and we try to bring in all the people that can help us solve it. And trust me, we do a lot of hard work in this community, and we've been doing it for years. What I would like to see happen, and I was really impressed with the way you've handled the first part of this meeting, talking about how you can become a better commission. These are things that you need to do. You need to respect each other. You need to respect the people that you work with. You need to respect the people that have gone before you. Otherwise, you're not going to get anything done. And when you come in here, you should have nothing on your mind but the work of this commission. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Orville Townsend. Uh, notorious, you probably heard my name in the podcast, but 
when I first heard that podcast, I'm a person, I'm big on communication. I personally don't feel that there's no problem that cannot be solved if the people involved are willing to come together and communicate with honest, open, honest communication. So when I first heard the podcast and I'm listening to this young lady rake me over the coals and, you know, making say, and, and some of the statements were, were false, like she's tired of hearing me talk about the whole stuff about how I hung out with Emmett Till and things like that. I, 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 I know, don't know Emmett Till. The only thing I know about Emmett Till is he's a cocky young Northern black that went south and they hung him. They brutalized him. That's all I know about Emmett Till. But how did I get in her podcast with that type of description? You know, but my first thought was maybe I need to contact this young lady and sit down and see if we can communicate and work this out. But in order to do that, when I start thinking, what is it that I've done to her? that I need to take to her because I'm ready. If I've done something to her, I'm ready to apologize. So that was my first thought. But then I became puzzled because I realized I don't know this lady. I've had no contact with her. She's had no contact with me. So the only reason that I'm in her podcast in that manner is vicious. There's no cause for it. Now, I will admit, I've been here since 1962. I've been in Iowa City a long time, and I pissed a lot of people off, and most of them were white. Because when I first came here, we weren't welcome. But now we have a black community, and, and, and I'm seeing things that make me feel good. I look at this commission. This makes me feel good. Because it means that our city has gotten to the place where it's willing to put a commission together of minorities and let them have a say so in how they're going to be treated and what their expectations are. I thought that was great. You guys have a lot of power. But I want to get back to the fact I still don't understand why this young lady chose to attack me. And I guess a bigger question is, when our city appoint individuals to commissions and committees, I think they do so with the expectation that those individuals are going to be objective, fair, professional, and be very respectful of the law and each other. So I guess my concern would be if we allow, if we continue to allow an individual who has openly attacked citizens for no reason at all to continue on this committee, what message are you sending? Because I think the trust that the city and the citizens are putting in you as a commission is that you are going to be strong. Hell, you, if necessary, you're supposed to stand up to the city to protect me. I think you have that power. But for God's sake, don't flush it down the drain. I know you got sentimental feelings about this, and I know it's difficult to, you know, as you would say, throw one of your peers under the bus. But this is not about throwing one of your peers under a bus. This is about one of your peers making an individual choice that was out of line. It was disrespectful. It had nothing to do with any goal that the city or any commission would expect. You have the power to set a pace. And I'm hoping that you would want this commission to be known not only for integrity, 
but also to be known as a commission. And if individuals are going to be want to be a part of this commission, then they should be willing to be respectful, to work for the citizens of our city, and also basically to make sure that they don't, that their personal feelings, especially if they're going to do something that is very, very disrespectful and very, very vicious, that that type of attitude, a behavior, that they should understand that it's not accepted. So if you don't react to that, then maybe you're saying, the message you're sending is that if you don't react to it, then maybe you're sending a message that you accept it. You have an opportunity, you know, I hope you would take advantage of it. And it's always as a citizen, if it's anything that I can do, I'm still here. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Angel. I just wanted to add on that you guys make it seem as though this happened like two years ago. This just happened in June, June 5th and June 16th. So I just wanted to make sure that that we noted that. Um, the issue that I want to address, though, is your commissioner, um, Daphne Daniels, the incident that happened Tuesday. Um, as I stated earlier in today's meeting, when Clifton and, and Mohammed came up to approach Ray Sand. Actually, was... I'm sorry, that actually was part of the discussion. And I, I, I was it already? Yeah, it was agenda item number six. So unfortunately, I can't, oh, so we can't. allow you to talk about this right okay. now. Okay. Well, me. Okay. All right. Roy Sam Porter, Iowa City. First of all, uh, Commissioner Rivera, I do want to thank you for starting out the way that you did. It's been heavy on my heart of the way things are. It hurts. It hurt like hell. To you, Daphne Daniel, I want to apologize because when I was talking to Traore and Clifton, you came in and you said what you said. I'm still hurt. I took it out on you and I said F you and I'm apologized to you. Because I'm sorry. But y'all don't know the hurt. Ju July 20th, I left here and went to Denver, Colorado for six days. I came home on July 25th. I checked my mailbox. And in my mailbox was a letter. And when I read the letter, I just couldn't believe the letter. I was like, why? I went on the podcast, which was called, I didn't want to, because it was called Hard Rock Caucus. So I thought it was some porn stuff. It's like, who does this? But I went on there. And in order for me to hear anything that was happening, I had to pay for the subscription. And they only said a dollar for the month. I paid the dollar. They charged me a dollar and six cents. I paid it. And Treyori, you talked about the, the podcast. Honestly, maybe God had it this way because things happen for a reason. But if you heard June 9th and June 16th podcast, one was so explicit that says slugging with a male Ali, July 16th. The other one said June 9th, the tumultuous TRC, IFR, and the Black Voices Project. The first video I listened to um, was the guy, Justin, who owns the website from Corville, literally came on and I have it on my phone. If you need to hear it, I'll play it. He said it was so explicit till he had to do a lot of bleeping. And he said, I never bleep, 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 bleep in my life. And he explained and he said there was name calling, name dropping, and it was hot. So when it first started off, 
the first thing that came out of a male's mouth was, oh, my God, I'm not into name, sh- uh, body shaming. But have you seen Roy Fan Porter? Do you see what she looked like? And she has a daughter, Stacy, who is a licensed esthetician. She should be doing um, service on her mother. And she left that. And this is where I really don't even want the podcast to come out. Because after this, ask your chair of the TRC, Truth and Reconciliation, Truth Telling and Reconciliation, a chair to sit on a podcast and talk about sugar daddies, how she get on sugardaddies.com. I'm not going to go there. And, and to talk about the sexual explicit stuff. I'm not going there. But I, what I heard, I literally said, if they was to hear this, she wouldn't be able to get a job in this city. And that's why I kept saying, if y'all can get the podcast, you would not believe what spewed out of her mouth. And it's not about her just literally talking about me, but as the chair, if if you in your private conversation in your home and you with your girlfriends and y'all want to talk about different stuff, that's okay. But to go on a live podcast and say this type of stuff, and then you want to twist it and turn it and make it turn on me like I did something wrong. I wasn't expecting this when I got back from Denver, Colorado. I just came back on the 25th, which which my anniversary, 30 years, married to my husband. I came back that day and that's what I read. The second podcast was when she talked about the Black Voices Project. This is in June. A couple of weeks later, she was made the chair with in July. I don't know. Right after that, she had went on these two podcasts. If the podcasts wasn't bad, why was they taken down? She apologized. She never once said, I didn't say that. No, I didn't. What she said was what she... She apologized for, uh, she said it was ill considered. It was harmful and hurtful. And it was, it was very hurtful. And why? Because I have had no dealings with the male. I have not seen her. The last time I seen her was we brought Deidre Dejeer that's running for governor to the old brick. And she stood in the back and she never came in. So I haven't had any dealings. I haven't seen her. I don't see her. And for her to do this, in the podcast, she said, the talking about the Black voices, it went on to state, I'm going to run against her in 2024. That's fine. Do what you, that's fine. We need people to run. I will help you run. But she said, she's so MF and stupid, I can beat her in a debate. And, you know, she just went on and went on. And that's when she started talking about Orville and Emmett Till. It just went on and on and on. It it was not caused for. I don't know why. So for people to continue to say it goes back to the TRC. When I left the TRC, true enough, I have come to y'all many times dealing with the budget. When you wanted to pay yourselves, I was like, commissioners don't get paid. When you talked about paying an outside firm, I was like, no, we need local people. I came before the board. And when I seen Annie Tucker, V and Angie involved, they came to us. They talked to the Black Voices. We was happy that we had local people involved. You have not seen none of us at your your meeting trying to stop you from what you've been doing. We have not been here. When I asked, when I read in front of the city council on Tuesday, I asked you all, I asked the city council to remove Amel Ali and let Chesity Dillard make her the chair because she's the vice chair now. Make her the chair so that you all could continue to do the work that you're doing. Not one time trying to stop TRC. Not one time trying to come before you all. Like Tashaylin said, Tashaylin was the vice chair when you all voted me down, but instead I resigned. But I was the the chair. And you made a decision right away that I had called a young man on the phone and talked to him. And all y'all know is 
Like I told you, Eric, I told you, Treori, today. I never even know why I was being voted down or what I had done to be voted down. No one ever, like to Shaylin said, no one ever told me what I did. They just said, we're voting you down. And I said, no, you're not going to vote me down. I'm going to step down. Therefore, it would make to Shayla Harrington, the vice chair, now the chair. They voted her out. And when she says she got kicked in the face, she really did because she hadn't done anything. She hadn't done anything to anybody and she didn't deserve that treatment. You guys had already said you wanted me down. I stepped down. She should have been the chair. So all this ongoing fighting back and forth and all this with me and Amel Ali, it's not happening. A male has to be held accountable for what she's done. And even in uh, the meetings, they said, you know, I'm disrespectful. And, 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 and what I, I hear from people all the time is I am the chair of Johnson County. I have fought hard as hell to be in the place that I am. I have worked hard for this position. Ain't nobody gave me nothing. So when you talk about truth and reconciliation in 2011, the Iowa city police went after me. I got my own truths to tell. I, it hasn't been easy for me. That's why I fight so hard in this community for other people. I stand up and I fight. I have been known as an angry black woman. They call me that many times. And so me trying to tell the TRC last year, two years ago when I was serving, I'm no longer the angry black woman. I have a seat at the table. We now can go sit down. If you need to talk to somebody, I can take you to that person and we can have a conversation. I've said that all from the beginning and to call us coons, a coon is a nigger, no matter how you put it. It's a word that like, I was like, who even used that word anymore? So I'm going to go sit down, but I want y'all to know this was, this isn't easy for me. I have to walk in the stores. People see me. I know a lot of people, people ask them, people see the paper. What is going on? I stopped answering my phone. Am I hurt? Yes, I'm hurt, but I can move forward. I'm willing to move forward today. Clifton Johnson, Muhammad Traore and Eric Harris. We invited y'all to the Black Voices. We are ready to sit down and work with y'all. The white people are looking at us and they think that we're gonna continue to fight, but the fight ends today. It ends today because we're going to work together. But I'm just asking you in order for us to move forward to do the right thing. Thank you. Would there be anyone, anyone else in the public that would like to comment? I just want to give a moment to what just happened. Um, honor and respect you and give you some space. I'm not white, but I'm not a black person either. And I don't know why I'm here. I don't know why I'm listening to this. Okay, you just said you came back from Denver. I just moved back from Denver three years ago. It's really, really confusing to me coming from actual Black Lives Matters meetings to like come to this space of so much pain and so much trauma and have it be on public record and have white people in the room and have all respect to you, Annie and David, I love you. I've known you basically my whole life. You're very, very nice white people, but I don't understand why white people are getting paid to do mediation work in terms of racial justice issues when they've never experienced racism. And I wanna talk about um, what Kevin Rivera said about um, restorative justice. Number one for restorative justice from my understanding, and I know none of you know me or know what I've done, but my number, my, my number one understanding, it has to be done in a safe space. 
this space does not feel safe to me. And I'm not just being like woo woo acupuncture, like, you know, airy fairy, like literally it doesn't feel safe in here. And I don't think anyone feels safe. And Commissioner Harris, last two weeks ago, you said you don't want anything else to stall the process. And I respect that. And I, I mean, I have no idea how frustrating everything must be because I can't understand it because I can't read any of the minutes. But honestly, I think that a pause should be taken. If I can't trust a commissioner not to use that word, that that word is even a vocabulary word in somebody, I, I, how can I, as a person of color in Iowa City who has experienced the light version of racism that light people like me experience, how can I come anywhere in Iowa City and get justice and, and trust that the people who are gonna facilitate the discussion understand my perspective, much less the perspective of somebody who's, who's experienced so much worse. Sorry, I'm not being very articulate, but I'm just, I don't understand. That's what I came here to say. I don't understand any of this. And I respect all of you, but I don't understand this process. I don't understand how it could be safe. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to uh, give public comment? Okay. Um, so uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to answer that. So, All right. Um, if there are no more public comment, we're going to go and move into our discussion. Okay. Commissioners, is there anyone that would like to speak first? I would like to just uh, say, I'm so sorry. Um, I would like to uh, address the elephant in the room. Um, obviously Commissioner Ali is not here and she did ask me to speak to fellow commissioners and ask her, ask, she asked for space. Um, I understand that we just heard a lot of urgency in our community. community. She asked for space to process what's going on for her. Um, whether, regardless of what side you're on, um, it is a lot for her as well. And she has asked that we don't make any decisions without her here. So I just like to put that out there. I'll go first. <clears throat> uh, she's a grown woman and she's had every opportunity to be here. And she decided to go into a podcast and do damage to the commission. That's a bottom line. She has, we, we, everybody's dealing with some sort of traumatization. It's one of the reasons why we're dealing with this in the first place. And I find it unfortunate that to, to look at a situation so ca casually that you'll go on a podcast and say whatever you want is too much of a loose cannon, period. And then not show up after you do the fact of the matter. Like, that doesn't make any sense to me at all professionally as a Marine or anything else along those lines. I just can't even sit next to that. To me, that's more of a coward's way of dealing with something. You cause a problem, then you don't want to deal with it. Everybody needs space. Well, every time we need space, then somebody wants to shut us down. And that's another ball kicked down the road and we don't get anything done. That's upsetting to me because that is exactly what I mean about professionalism. If we are professional, we don't come across these problems. If we do the right thing and realize how important the situation that we're in is, you don't get on podcasts and randomly say things like, it won't come out. It's a podcast. To me, that was completely unacceptable. And no, I have not heard the whole thing. I have heard tidbits of it, but I know it's enough that here we are right here right now. There was an emergency meeting made earlier over it. So therefore it's disruptive enough. And once again, we're all adults here. We got to toughen up a little bit because we got a lot of tough things that are far more important ahead of us. And we cannot show our community that we are always juggling and dropping the ball. 
If you want to stand up for yourself right now, we have a phone line that's open right now. Those doors are not locked at any point in time. You can defend yourself the same way anybody else has defended themselves at times right now too. And said, even apologize genuinely, it sounds. So, you know, you can come in and do that. The opportunity is there. I do not, I, I, I do not think a position of leadership is a casual thing to throw around. Everybody is counting on us. There's a lot of people out there who are counting on us. The Catholic Worker House is counting on us. All the hard work and effort that has been done by a mill is appreciated. And honestly, if the heart's in the right place, it can still continue. You don't have to be in the leadership position in order to still help. There's nothing wrong with saying, all right, let me step off to the side, but here's my connections. Here's what I've done. Here's what I'm willing to do. And especially if your heart's in the right place. And that might sound a little bit harsh, but I don't really think so because I think it's harsh to not think about all the rest of us and everybody else. And now we got to focus on you. I think that's unright. That's not right. It's not fair. It's not decent. And to throw other commissioners under the bus and then other commissioners who have been on never got the same treatment. It's just that looks like a mess. And that is exactly what I'm against here. I want us to do better. We can do better. And if we just hold ourselves to a little bit of a higher standard, there is no way progress can't be made. We had a great meeting, I feel like, with the city. We have opportunities to uh, mend wounds and move on past. However, we have to understand where the problem came from and accept responsibility or whoever is that problem or has created that problem. It's your responsibility to deal with. It might be scary, but welcome to the adult world. We all are going through scary things, period. It is irresponsible for us to let the city see us in any other light other than see there's a problem we need to take care of it we need to move on and get the job done we're here for a reason we all volunteer volunteer so to hear about stress and over stress levels and everything you know i have not brought up my stress levels at all want to know why because i know how important this position is however do I have my truths that I want to get out that has hurt me deeply in the process of this? I haven't, I haven't ex expressed things that have happened with you guys. I have not because I know right now, do I make this about me or do I look at the bigger picture? And then when there's a time, an appropriate time to give my part in, that's when I do it. That's how I look at it because I feel like that's a little bit more of a professional way of thinking. There's a bigger picture. There's a bigger story. There's a lot of people who are really suffering. We have a lot of responsibilities. I personally, I do not think she should be in a leadership role. I'm sorry. It just, it, it would be great to have her still uh, contribute, but that was given up the moment that she got so comfortable that she did whatever podcast. No, I have not heard the whole thing, but I know it's enough to create this much of a disturbance. After time and time again, I watch meetings, we come in, Hurry up. Let's hurry up and get it done with and then walk out. I take off work to make sure that I'm here on time. And by the way, my record of being here, track record, I've been here at every meeting. Maybe I miss one. And that's because I knew what I volunteered for. I knew what the responsibility was and I knew what I was going to do. I have people that I work with all the time that I decide to stop, say, guys, I got to go. I got stuff to do. And I come here to make sure that I get that done. Period. I, I'm not about, and this is not the Cliff Johnson show. I don't want that by far. That's not what I joined on for. And I don't want it to be anybody else's show. I think it is inappropriate for it to be that. If you have things you want to deal with, you can deal with that in other ways. But this is our job to do right now. And we need to be adults about this, who are responsible, who care about the position. Caring about the position means showing up for the position and doing the best you can. And then after that, don't worry about it. 
and then shake hands, give hugs, move on with life. We should not be at each other's throats over anything, period. And I hope that we can do better. We have a great position right now to try. Other groups might have stepped away and, and, and gone off to New York back or anything along those lines. We're here. We have a we have an opportunity right now. Let's take it. Uh, with that, I'll, I'll you. Before we continue, uh, Stephanie, what is the protocol of someone in the um, audience? We know that's up to you. I mean, you okay. can uh -huh. you can open it back up, or you can keep moving forward. With she the... she did speak before, so I just didn't understand. So we okay. And I can go next if you want me to. Um, I personally don't mind if she speaks, I, but. We will just uh, continue with commissioners. Go, go ahead. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so this is going to be difficult for me, but we talked about earlier that we have to be able to tell each other the truth. But we've heard a lot of negative things. So I'm going to start with the mitigating factors about a male. Um, I felt like that the city council, they tried to rush the hearing through. And I kind of feel like they wanted to interfere in our internal affairs when they should have let us deal with it first. And if they wasn't satisfied how we dealt with it, then they can deal with it. <clears throat> Amel, she does wonderful things in the community. Um, even before she was the chair, she was the leader, she was the leader on a bunch of different issues. She has been here since day one, like me. So she has been down that winding, difficult path. And she was one of the hardest workers on the TRC. But like we said, we have to tell the truth. And I'm sad that I have to do this right now, but I have to tell the truth. While we were talking and the issue was brought up about how she couldn't be at the meeting and she should have been at the meeting. Well, when the public was commenting, a male was sending me messages on my phone, like, don't listen to her. Don't let them brainwash you. That is cowardice. I'm sorry to say that. If she, if she, if she wanted to be here to defend herself, Defending yourself is not sending me text messages while people are public are publicly commenting. That's what just happened, literally. Five or 10 minutes ago, and I can show people if they want to see it. So, but this incident is an incident. So that was my mitigation thing that I put the part about her text me. So I'm going to go to the aggravating factors. And there's a few of them. And this is an incident that people, they will, it would never be forgotten. Ever. The TRC as a whole has been dragged around and embarrassed, whether it's KCRG, whether it's press citizen, whether it's my children coming in saying that I was on my break at work and they had a TV and this was on the TV at work and they're coming to ask me about it. I didn't want to pick up my phone and look at anything. Every time I would see TRC, Roy Sam Porter, Amelia Lee, I would just take it off my phone. So as far as me seeing the podcast, I saw the two snippets. I saw some part of the whole video, but it got taken down. Even the snippets were just horrible to me. So I got a couple, uh, like a few points I want to touch on is the betrayal piece. I don't do betrayal and not anybody in this room should want to deal with that. She made those podcasts in early June and in the second week or almost the third week of June and talked about fellow TRC members and then came and sat in the room with us like it was never going to come out. That is betrayal. You came in this room and, and me and Amel have had our back and forth and she calls me and tells me, hey, I got a problem with you. I don't like this. I don't like that. We've had public spats. So if she had a problem with me or anybody else on this commission, she could have easily talked to us because that's the type of relationship that we have. Another thing is we've already had difficulty, you know, with people trying to slow down our commission. This is just fuel for the city officials to slow us down more. The, the, and the difference between a mistake, there's a big difference between a mistake and something that is premeditated. When you do a pack, like when you do a podcast, the person that's going to make the podcast, because I've done plenty of interviews, they usually call and say what the subject is going to be about. We're going to make this name slugging. We're going to make this name the 
tumultuous TRC and all these other organizations, you knew that before you went into that. You knew that. That's premeditated. I understand people make mistakes. That's premeditated. Now, I'm not going to dig into it because I've heard the sexual things from not just one person, maybe 10 or 15 people. And I've heard them from respected community members that don't even put themselves in gossip like that. And that was the first call that I got was from a very respected community member. And she had seen, she sent me the whole video, but I tried to watch it. I watched the snippets and I couldn't get through it because it was so much controversy that it was just gone. But if any of those alleged, because you have to call it alleged things until we see the video, if any of those things about the sexual things are true or any of that, some people who need to tell truth has been victims of sexual trafficking. So how can you go and you're supposed to be a chairperson and go and say disgusting sexual things and expect a person to want to appear before us and maybe tell their truths about some of the sexual abuse that they might have suffered through? The Emmett Till part is very, very hurtful to me. Number one, the allegations that she made, the person in his room said he never even did that. That never even happened. So that is a flat out lie that she made up. Emmett Till is part of African-American history. It was a very sad and hurtful time in African-American history. How dare you think you have the right to ridicule that? Okay, so we got to that part. Um, my trust is gone for a male. I, as, as hard as I, I, that doesn't mean that I don't like it as a person because I mentioned in my mitigating factors of all the stuff and the hard work that I saw I do, that doesn't mean I, doesn't, I don't like her as a person, but it's hard to be on the same page with her. We didn't cause this. And it's hard for me to take responsibility as a whole for something that she did independently. Now, I do things on my own. I make videos about voting rights, about MRAPs. If it ever comes down to where there's a problem about that, I will take my own responsibility. And in this case, she's going to have to take responsibility for this. Um, we are at a real critical moment for the TRC, where we're almost where we want to be. And during those times we made those podcasts, the steam was building up to where we want to be. Why would you make that podcast? And then, you know, using the word coons. I can't deal with that. I dealt with racism my whole life. I can't deal with that. And if, you pose, if you're a person of color as well, and you're calling people coons, do you know the history of that? It's terrible. It's so terrible that I don't even want to discuss it because people know. People know what it means. The hard work that we're doing, by me listening to what I heard, it seems like it's been taken for a joke. And, and I don't appreciate that. And when other people come and they tell me what I almost want to just take my phone and I had a day with my phone just nonstop, nonstop. And I just want to take my phone and just put it on airplane mode before I threw it because it was just ridiculous. And I agree with what other people said about how fast the trigger was pulled on them when they was asked to resign. We have to keep that same precedent. She, I would, I would appreciate if she would have came and say, hey, for the better of the commission, maybe I should step down from my position. So the commission can move forward and move past this controversy. Do you think that the city officials are going to let this go if we just say, hey, let's just let it stay in place how it is. It's going to be another special hearing before you know it. So I regret that I have to call for a male to resign from a leadership position. But I have no objections to her stand on the TRC if she can find a way to fix what she's done. It is irreparable damage that she has done to this community. 
And with that, I yield. I'd, I'd like to make a comment. Um, so this evening, we've heard from two former uh, chairs of the TRC. And it is very clear that while they don't hold a grudge, they do feel like they were wronged when they were removed from the TRC. And so um, I really think as we discuss this, let's remember that. Like, we don't, we don't need to call anyone a coward. We don't need to throw anyone's business out there because we don't condone what happened. We don't condone talking about people's kids. We don't condone talking about body shaming. But let's not sow the seeds of hurt that is going to come back to bite us in a few months or a few years. Let's just be respectful. Um, and with that, I yield. Well, keeping her in that role, that podcast will come out and we will all be stung later. Um, for me, uh, I think out of everyone on the commission, I've probably known Amel the longest. Uh, so I've known Amel since we were five years old kindergarten at Roosevelt Elementary. Uh, went to elementary school together as well later on. I moved to the east side, also went to Grantwood together, Southeast Junior High, City High School. I say all that just to say of, I'm not saying that we act like, you know, Amel can never redeem herself, never be a part of the community again. That's not what the point of this agenda item is to me. To me, the point is that whether it's reconciliation, restorative justice, that's the next path, never once have I ever heard that reconciliation and restorative justice cannot include a person being removed from a position of power. Because if we're being completely honest, this is hyperbole, of course, but if we're being completely honest, let's say a police officer does something really heinous to somebody. And you're going through a reconciliation or sort of justice process. Can someone give me the percentage of the amount of times they think that officer would be allowed to remain in that position if it was a reconciliation or sort of justice process, if they were to have killed that person or multiple people in what was shown to be cold blood? So that's just to say that it's never off the table that someone can be removed from a position of power. But that too is, I think it puts an undue burden on all of us if we just sit here and say that, okay, we're just going to wait now for city council to decide on the 16th. I'd personally have to be an absolute fool myself to think that there is no way that the absolute minimum that they don't do is strip her of a leadership position. And I think that we make a grave mistake if we sit here and not choose to make a decision on whether she keeps a leadership position or not ourselves before that happens. Because to me, it's about integrity. It's about showing the community that we all actually have integrity and we're willing to stand behind it rather than telling city council, yeah, you deal with it, you do it for us. Because for us to have met tonight and not to make a decision has me sitting here of like, why did we show up anyways? I wasn't even supposed to be in Iowa City today. I was supposed to be in Des Moines. I came back last night to make sure I could be ready for everything. It has absolutely crippled me in terms of the amount of time I've been able to put in for work. So I know it's going to be a very long rest of tomorrow to make sure I'm done with everything by the time I need to be. I also feel like I'm disrespecting what happened last year. And not only that, but to Shailen Arrington, I know that you'd said that um, never got the apology. I'm not, I texted you once and I think I tried to call you, but you were very upset at the time and I do not blame you for not answering. But I want to apologize to you now for not taking more of an initiative and coming to you personally face-to-face -face and making that apology. Because that has been on my mind every single month since that day happened. And it came back full circle again today when it comes to people in leadership. Because the last time we had that vote, the principles I used to give that vote of removal or to even bring it up in the first place 
I'd be a complete hypocrite if I wasn't willing to do the same thing today, no matter how well I know the person. I can't sit here and be a person that talks trash about people in Washington, D.C. to my friends all the time about, I don't like how this person does this, this person does that, or all oh, everything would be a lot better if this changed or that changed, or I don't like this decision. But when it comes to another public official that I closely work with, to act like it doesn't matter then, then I have no principles. And I wouldn't expect anyone else outside of this room in this community to follow anything that we do. Because that's what I'm thinking about right now. That average person, not that person that you hear from regularly about this thing, that average person, because it's about bringing the whole of the community, the community together or as much of it as possible. How many people in this community are just going to sit by and let that go when they start reading more about the actual commission, regardless of if they think, oh, OK, the rest of the tape was worse or just what was out was worse. The principle in itself of being able to disparage somebody like that. And then also keep needing to have the time. The time is one thing. But I was also just on the phone with her two and a half hours ago. And like last week, I was gone from the meeting as well. And I could have not come, but I attended online via Zoom. Maybe she doesn't want to say anything. That's fine. But please hear it out. Because it's hard to protect and protect and protect and to act like I'm okay with things or that I can sit here and have it not weigh on my mind when that, that'd be a lie. I can't sit on this commission if I'm not honest with you in that way. But it also hurts me. The last thing is I gave up a lot, a lot to try to keep this stuff going. Like I've said it once to some of you before. One of my oldest friends, since we were six years old, I watched him just deteriorate over the last year and a half, go homeless. And there's times I'd walk to these meetings. And the only thing I could do was buy him some food and talk to him for a few minutes and hope I'd see him again later that week and that he'd finally listen to me and get help. And it killed me inside that I'm gonna to walk to this meeting to try to make things better for people in the city so people don't end up in his position only to then hear about this podcast. And not just that, last summer, a cousin of mine I'm really close with passed away of a heart attack. I've had a few other people this year really close to me either die or commit suicide. There's a lot, a lot that you got to work through and try to bury to stay even anything close to level headed being on something like this. So I don't know if it was something much, much heavier she had or something, but if that was the case, again, I started this with, I've known her since I was five years old. I wish that was something I could have been told but it's hard knowing everything I buried and gone through and everything all of you might have too, and sit here and be okay with sacrificing, but not ask someone else that's now in that position to do the same. I don't think that this community can truly move forward and accept the recommendations from this commission, unless we ourselves are willing to go on the record and take a vote on removing Amel from a leadership position, the, current, the one she currently has. It'd be a different story for me maybe if she was here for this meeting now, but it's hard when having that conversation two and a half hours ago and not seeing that name even on the Zoom screen. So I know I'll be making the motion after we're done talking. You're all welcome to vote however you'd like, but that's all I have that I yield. I'll take the floor, Wangui, for the record. Commissioner Wangui, I, I'll start with a question to my fellow commissioners. Oh, 
I said again, I didn't attend the work session. Oh, and I can't help thinking about the work session and the podcast for some, that's how it's in my head. But I'm hearing, I've had some comments that, oh, I haven't seen the podcast. So for me, it's here, see. So my question as we move forward, how are we dealing with that? But at the same time, I am trying to see a way forward if Amel is still our chair. How is that going to look like? Because I'm thinking as if the way I understand the media, I think we are still in this cycle for how many days now in our city? And also, especially with uh, the class of city high that graduated with Amal, they are I mean, it's lit, whatever is just going on. So I'm trying to see. And how do we get to that point if we are retaining her as a chair, if we make that decision? Okay, I guess it's through a vote. So before we get to that point, if we are putting that motion on the table to vote on it, Oh, I guess what I'm calling for is to discuss with, oh, I haven't seen the podcast, but at the same time, I'm not calling people who have seen it liars or even what is out there in the media. Sometimes it's not always reported as it is, but at the same time, we, they are professionals. They do their due diligence. So... Yeah, how do we go on with that before we even vote on not having seen it? But I acknowledge uh, in my work and a lot of other people, if uh, somebody's employer, uh, they will state and tell you even before you take on the job, we are together and we will work with you even if there are problems or if you get us into problems for as long as our interests go together. So I'm thinking about that as a commissioner. We have worked with the Malali and we've acknowledged and appreciated if we were to tabulate the hours we have all put in. She's put in the most, that's my opinion. And I'm thinking I'm almost right. And we have worked together. I'm not saying we don't have disagreements. We do. I'm not even saying some of us have not uh, made a mistake or done something. And we've always come back here and apologized publicly and dealt with it so that we can move on. Like Commissioner Harris and Commissioner Traore, you have said you wished Amel was here, but in a way, she was here through you texting you. And she also did tell our vice chair why she is not here. Uh, what I'm saying in very many words and convoluting, we've been working together with Amel. And despite our arguments, we have been moving forward. But at this moment, Oh, I'm asking myself, is it a time to separate because we don't seem to have the same interest? Commissioner Mel and the rest and the, and the work of the TRC. And of course, yeah, I'll stop there because I could start rambling. Thank you. I'm going to. I would like to speak Alex. before we go forward. Yes, I was giving it to you now. Thank you. Yeah, I, I don't. I 
how are we supposed to make a decision without hearing these tapes? That's all I have to say. Um, I feel like there's a lot of um, hearsay right now. Like we don't actually know what was said. And I don't think it's fair to make any commissioner make a decision without fully hearing what has happened. Um, I'm not here to defend nor to um, go against Tamil right now because I can't make a, a proper decision. So I feel like um, this is really, um, and also I, you know, I, I, I see what I, I would see some people, um, I've noticed some people really, we have to be careful when it comes to speaking about like Amel's personal actions um, as, you know, that, um, you know, calling her a, a prostitute or whatever. I like, I, that's just mind blowing right now. So like, I know there's allegations against her for saying some, um, you know, negative things, but also we have to look on the other side of this too. Um, and also understand, uh, you know, how this came to be uh, with so much contention um, from this other organization in the community for so long and uh, so much divisiveness being brought upon us because of uh, uh, people's personal feelings about us um, throughout this whole process. Um, you know, I just, I, I think that there's like a much larger picture to look at as well. Um, and so I think that like, I, I'm not going to make a decision until I can at least, like, hear these tapes. I mean, I, it's just, it's kind of ridiculous to be sitting here and talking about things that are, have only been heard, like, through gossip, basically. Um, I think that's, I think it's ridiculous. I think that uh, the uh, Board of Supervisors should have taken it upon themselves to give us, to give the, these tapes to us so we could make a, a, an informed decision. Like, I feel silly right now. Like, I, I really do. Like, this is embarrassing. And um, that's that's where I'm at. Thank you. Oh, hold on. Uh, I, I'm just I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say real quick, just so you get informed. Um, some people haven't heard the tape, but I would say at this point, at least the snippet, three fourths of the city heard it, including myself. I heard it myself personally, um, and it was played at a public hearing this morning. So you mean the one not, where the, the Emmett Till snippet? Yeah, even when I heard the snippet, that was enough for me. Oh, then, okay. Well, that's not enough for me. So, um, oh, I that's I, enough because that's where the coons and all the other stuff come in. That I never heard that word in that snippet. I don't know. Maybe I haven't heard what you've or heard the old then. farts or making fun of somebody's name, comparing it to a popcorn brand. I don't I that think that's what me. I don't think that's what Amel was doing. See, like, that's the thing is I didn't hear it like that. Like, I don't think she was making fun of the name. She was just basically saying, oh, that's how you're, I remember the name. So anyways, the point is, is I need to hear tapes before I make a decision. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying like, uh, I'm not here defending Amel. I'm not here going against Amel. I'm just saying I can't make an informed decision and I feel silly right now. And I find this kind of embarrassing that we're having to sit here and just go on like, uh, you know, like I said, what I consider to be gossip at the moment. We want to be out of the news yeah. cycle. To be completely honest, I made that, I thought about that a lot too, but then what really hit me was the, the more I reached out and asked for the full copy and to be able to listen to it so I can speak in a more informed fashion, the more it hit me of, yeah, I'm probably never going to get to hear the actual full tapes. And why is that? Maybe that's not true. But right no, now, no. But why? Why, are, why aren't we getting that? And, and she has to be the one to have the. That's I don't that's, I just want to clarify. Amel does not own the podcast, despite. Excuse, excuse me, ma'am, ma'am. Can I? Can I? Thank you so much. And if okay, th thank you very much. Um, go ahead. Daphne. So, while it doesn't have to be posted even like whether behind a paywall or on the Apple podcast or whatever, the people who own it would have to send it to us. Right. And the people who own it are not, is not a Mel. So and they refuse. Yeah, Wait, exactly. but doesn't Roy and Porter have these tapes? So then doesn't that mean the supervisors have it? I mean, that's all I'm well, asking. Actually, Where are these I, tapes? See, okay, I, I'm sorry, Sakalis. Um, so as far as I know, and Roy Sand Porter's in the audience. Um, she has handed it over to the sheriff, the, the sheriff, or it is not in her possession anymore. So, so that's just the clip. The clip? Just the snippet, I think. Just the snippet. 
Okay, she just has a snippet. No one has access at this moment to the full podcast as far okay. as I know. So I, all I'm saying is, like, how are we supposed to make the, an informed decision without hearing it? Mm-hmm. This and- is Commissioner Johnson. She She's had every opportunity, once again, to show up here and defend herself in any way, shape, or form. Uh, by not showing up at all, I don't see how that's productive. And kicking a ball down the line again is how we will end up getting shut down. And I think that's a problem. I want to just say, because uh, thank you, somebody saying, I just want a clarification. So that snippet, is it part of the public records now? If it was played today, is it part of the, was it at the yes. city? It was, yes, it Stephanie. was played this morning. So it's part of the public records? Yes. Okay, so, uh, so earlier on, I didn't even think when I was asking my question, whether there was something that is there that is available. So for me, that is good. There is a snippet to that I can use that should to be make my, record. and it is on public record. So it is on me to go, go get it and on public record to support what earlier on I was using the word here. See, there is a piece of that. Yeah. 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 Um, and so, Sakaus, did you have anything else you wanted to add? We definitely cut you off there. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Um, I just think this is uh, like, I don't think we should be having this discussion without the tapes. And um, I find that quite embarrassing. Thank you. Well, Thank you. and um, I would actually gotta like get to get them to me. So <laughs> we can... Uh, remember the the professionalism and the respect that we talked about earlier. I'd appreciate if we could all reset and and respect each other because it's okay that we have differing opinions, but it's not okay to talk over each other. Is gotcha. Okay? Thank you for that. Yeah, so I, just I go appreciate ahead. that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I have not had a chance to talk, so if it's okay go ahead, with you, go ahead, go ahead. I, would, I would love to just say what I'm thinking. I... So as the, the the newest vice chair, um, when I first heard this, it was six days into this position. Um, this was, I'm just going to say personally, a lot for me. It was not what I expected. But if I step back and think about why I'm here, as we all are, it's for to move this forward because this community deserves this. Um, as our commissioner uh, Rivera said, restorative justice is something new for me is something hard to step into because it's something I frankly am just learning about now. It's not something that is going to come natural. And there are lots of aspects that I would love to dive into. I'm going to also agree with our uh, Commissioner Sakawis. How can I make a decision about anything without being able to hear the full podcast? That's not fair. Oh, we'll never hear it. I'm not done. Thank you very much. Um, I, I understand that we don't have access to it. It was one of the the members of the audience who said that we should go try to hear it. Another member of the audience said that we we don't have to make the decision now, but we should come to a decision. We don't have to move in haste. We should make sure the decision is made in the best way. I understand that in the past when I was not part of the commission, there was a lot of uh, movement and decisions made in haste that hurt people. Why would we do it again? So I, I say all this to say that I, I operate under, let's seek to understand. Let's, let's see, let, let's hear both sides. Let, let's actually sit down and practice what, this, what the mission of this organization is. Practice what we preach and, and move in a way of what could be restorative justice, what could be reconciliation. As Commissioner Traore said, um, we do not have uh, restorative justice or uh, transformational justice does not mean that we would never remove someone from position, but it does mean that we are seeking to understand the whole situation. We live in a country where people say innocent until proven guilty. I do not think I can make a full decision without having all the information that is necessary to move forward. So with that, I yield. All I'm, all I'm going to say before, Kevo, you continue is one way or another, whether it's temporary suspension 
or of uh, of having the title or removal of the title, I'm going to make a motion for one or the other. Right now, I'm leaning towards the suspension of holding the title because I can already tell I'm not going to get the votes for stripping of the title. But that's just me. Of From what I'm thinking now, that's the direction I'm going. But you can all continue. Go ahead, Kevin. Uh, God. Really set myself up here uh, <laughs> to not do restorative justice well. Um, but I'm going to try to kind of process. I, I mean, restorative justice is in a roadmap. It's a compass. And we also sort of have to interact with it to, to interpret um, how we move forward. I did want to kind of mention, I think there's a couple of um, mm, that's it right there too. Okay, thank you. What? Not you not not yet. If they say they want to hear the video, no, so um, you don't want to hear it. Is there is there a way this could be a closed session? Because I'm a little concerned. This sounds explicit. I don't. I know there are probably young people listening to this. I don't want them hearing some of the stuff that allegedly was said and in the same breath we're also saying that we be not going to make okay no we, we need to hear them the trc needs to hear them not the not the public okay, okay. Make a motion. so could we allow um commissioner rivera to continue what he was yeah, yeah. saying please yeah, not that yeah you should uh, go ahead. this isn't the explicit okay, okay. i i promise we will come back in just a moment thank you Um, I think there's a couple of sticking points that are, are, we're all rallying around that um, are drawing more divisiveness between us, right? One thing that I think that I know about restorative justice is that um, whereas maybe criminal justice um, has the ban uh, has the standard of like and the burden of proof and evidence that doesn't necessarily need to be a component of restorative justice. What the focus of restorative justice is is the hurt, period. We have people in our community who have been seriously hurt. And I haven't heard the tapes, just like the rest of everyone. But I have heard Roy San, Supervisor Porter, discuss the impact that the words that she heard had on her. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose to believe that hurt. I want to follow up that. Can I? Oh, oh OK. I thought you're done. Sorry. <clears throat> The other thing is that um, I was a part of the commission um, the last time we faced a similar decision of removing a chair. The thing that I want to point out is that, gosh, is that screwing us over now? I, it doesn't make any sense to me to hold myself to a flawed precedent. Um, if I'm, if we want to break silence, break the cycles of harm and swift action that isn't well considered, that doesn't include the pieces of reconciliation, then we're, we're then we are an embarrassment to the community, and this is a, a farce of a commission. Is it? So, um, oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm talking slow. No, <laughs> um, I don't think that swift decisions are in the spirit of restorative justice. I also don't think that um, separation is off the table in the context of restorative justice. I um, The thing that like I would have loved for this conversation tonight have to look to have looked like is, you know, for all the parties to be involved and for us to be asking the questions, not of whether or Mel should remain chair, but what do we do for Roy San? And what do we do for Amel? And what is the process after tonight of making sure that <clears throat> they can they can head into back into the community with a baseline of respect from everyone we haven't 
explored those topics. And I, I think that's a real um, stain on us, I think. Um, I do, I do want to add that there's also the hurt of Mr. Orville, yeah. the hurt to uh, Thank you. Supervisor Porter's daughter. So there is a lot of hurt. Thank too. you. Yeah. Um, I, I would not be in, I would support a, a, a suspension um, because I do think that keeping Amel in this position at this moment, at this time is um, going to produce it's not going to allow for healing um, for those who um, who have been hurt. Um, but I, I desperately want there to be a pathway for reinstallation somehow. Um, and I think that we need to have more conversations with you all, if you're willing to, um, to just understand a little bit better um, so that we can work in collaboration with one another. Thanks. If I can speak, uh, I would appreciate it. Um, Rosary Q. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, this is why I said I'm, I'm feeling embarrassed because I, exactly what Kevo said, um, I believe that there's a lo much larger context here. There's a history of hurt, um, which led up to um, Amel's words, for sure. And um, we need to like talk about like all of this like, um, and we do need to carry out some restorative justice, uh, like practices. Um, we do need to, uh, focus on the hurt inflicted upon like individuals and, um, fix that problem. And like, I just, I can't do that without hearing what happened. Like, that's just like, it's, it's, it's weird for me that we would actually be having this conversation without first all being like informed and prepared to have the conversation. And I think that's what I'm most upset about is we're having a conversation about things that may or may not have been said. And there's no, uh, we haven't been given any proof for it. Sure. If that proof exists, great. Like I, that's great. Um, but please let me see it and, uh, hear it so that I can make an informed decision. So, you know, I, I don't even know about like at the moment suspending or making any votes period, uh, because I, I can't, I, I, I would be remiss, uh, with my own ethics to do so without having, um, something to go on besides, you know, one snippet, which frankly, like, and this is just my own opinion, uh, which can be, um, looked at from many different perspectives, um, you know, considering what the Iowa freedom writers have been through. So like, there's a lot of people in this community that, you know, feel strongly about what um, the youth have experienced here from due to lateral oppression. So I'm just saying like this, this is a much larger conversation to be had, though, if those things were said, like certain, there are certain things that I heard were said. And if they were said, yeah, that's like grounds for, for sure, for suspension or for like removing her from chair. Or, or whatever. Um, but I would just like the information. So thank you very much. Uh, I understand that. Um, but we are, we're, yeah. we're, uh, I would really uh, like to I ask just want that to help wrap people, this up as well. Well, I'm going to do it. Thank All you right, very much. You. Um, I appreciate that th there are strong feelings in, in the public. And I understand that a lot of you know how this should work. If you would let us continue the discussion, I we all a lot of us already know what's what's been going on, and and I I understand how it can be frustrating that you can't just talk at us. But if you would please just keep comments to a minimum, I'd really appreciate it. Um, okay, and I will ask. I'll just ask right now, uh, um, commissioners. Would we like to hear the the tape? Yes. Okay. Not not here. Not yeah. Not I here. But it, not, it sounds like we're making excuses not to hear yeah. the, the, the tape. If you no, all want to. We no, can't hear no, them. It's no. not it's not okay to put those in the public. If they're ex explicit, no, we it's can't hear them here. It's already yeah. a public. 
it's already hey, well, obsolete. it seems like the majority is saying right. we would like she not, had no, we would she like had to no not hear it that. during this moment. And so I will see if we can get it disseminated to everyone outside of this, because we've already heard it was played during the meeting earlier today. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and make that motion so we can just move on. I just want to say one more thing before you make the motion. I agree with the suspension. Kevo changed my mind because I think the, that the suspension would give people time to go and hear the evidence for themselves. And then maybe at the next meeting, maybe we might have to call a special meeting. But I think that we need at least a week or two of a suspension so people can hear the evidence. But at this point, we have to get the negativity out of the news cycle. It was a point made earlier by somebody in here that said, what if it was just a random person who's not involved in this all the time? And they go look at that. And they see this thing and they see this whole thing. And, and, and one last thing, she's never said that she never, that she didn't say this. What I do appreciate what she did is every corner and every turn, she tried to apologize for it. So that's basically saying that she said, it. we don't have to go into the nitty gritty details of what she said. If people want to hear it, and they can hear it in private if they don't want to hear it in public, but you have to hear it. So I think a suspension would be in order to gather facts. This is Commissioner Johnson. And uh, when you're a leader, it's your responsibility to whatever actions you take, it's your responsibility to take care of those actions, to not show up, is irresponsible as a leader, bottom line. It is your job to back up anything that you might have done anything. And the opportunity I keep repeating has been here. If anybody wants to argue against it, you have the opportunity here and now. Once again, if we keep kicking the ball down the line, we will wonder why the game is lost. And that is my top priority, is why I don't wanna waste my time stepping away from jobs dealing with other issues i'll just say while we figure out the show of whomever show it is it's your responsibility as a leader and as a leader you should be able to stand up and say you know what i made a mistake and i apologize for that i'm going to sit here right here and own that due to the fact that it is my mistake not my mistake not anybody else's on here's mistake as much as we care about our our fellow commissioner Nobody's saying that that's dampered, but we have a responsibility. We have a job to do. And if we don't do it and we keep playing, let's figure out who did what. Regardless, going on to a podcast and discussing things along that nature, let's just say that bare minimum is inappropriate if you are in a leadership role. And this is something that will be used against us later. And then we'll wonder, oh, but how, why? And that is <clears throat> unacceptable. That is irresponsible. And that is her responsibility, not ours. Now, it's nothing personal. It is nothing personal at all. But it is what it is. It is a hard decision. And we have to kind of deal with a lot of hard decisions in this commission and in the future if we continue on with things. So we cannot fold already before we even get to the real gritty stuff because it'll get worse before it gets better. Unfortunately, she's not here. That is not our call. But for us to kick it down the line later on down the line, we are making a choice to take a risk and not take responsibility. And that hurts I would like to say, um, I, I really hear and receive your words of responsibility. Our views just differ in what that means. And I'm gonna say that I think it's our responsibility as someone else in the, in the, um, in the audience said, this is not a safe place. It doesn't feel like a safe space to, to share certain things. And I think it is up to us to protect all people. And at the very least, I, I, I definitely agree that we don't need to have this audio played right now. Mm -hmm. We can uh, move forward and um, someone can make a motion. We can, we, we can move. 
to the truth. So, we, hey, hey, uh, hey, I just, I, I just want to make sure. Respectful. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not saying. I'm not saying you're not. I'm just, just saying just that I'm about to go with the motion. Okay. So I just want to make sure we're not having. Okay. Um. So before I say this, just want to preface it with again, this is not out of animosity. This is again out of me thinking about the future of the commission. And I feel most comfortable in the future direction of this commission and existence of it. If right now I can put a put forward a motion that we as a commission tonight vote to suspend the title of chair from Amel Ali. Second. Second. Is there any discussion on this anymore? Um, the only thing I would say, one thing before we take this vote, is one of my main things, and it's not about the allegations. You know, we can go through that all day. But what I don't, I want us to make our own decisions because if we don't make a decision on this, just like this morning, the city is going to swoop in and make a decision for us. And we're going to even look more, more bad than we already look. I don't want that to happen. I don't want the city to be swooping in and making a decision for us because that almost happened this morning without us showing up and speaking against that. That's why I say that the suspension is the right thing to do so we can investigate because the moment this meeting is over and those people, the city officials see that we did nothing, they're going to plot on how to swoop in again because they made that special session in what, 35 hours? And they'll make another one, even though they couldn't fix other important issues like a school to workers in 36 hours. That shows the willingness that they have to swoop in. That's why it's our responsibility to take action on our own before they come swoop in again. And that was my main thing. When I woke up this morning, that was my main mission to stop them from, from getting into our internal affairs unless it's necessary. Are you? Um, so if uh, I just want to clarify, if we are um, moving forward with this motion for suspension, that means that we are saying we would like to maybe hold a special meeting to review yes. this before the f next meeting. Absolutely. And, and special special meeting? Can it be a pri are we allowed to have private meetings? Because like considering the explicitness, mm. apparently, of some of this no, stuff, no, like are no, we allowed to? No. Not, not allowed this to wouldn't have, fall under chapter I, 21 for a closed session. My reasoning again okay. for wanting a suspension is not because I need to hear these tapes. It's because I, I'm, I'm committed to process. Right. Um, and I don't think that process is going to happen quickly. But I, we, we have not had a sit down conversation with the major parties involved um, and have not delineated a path forward. Um, and I, I, I like for our solutions to come from those conversations. I, I, I agree. I, I, I think that um, the suspension shouldn't be considered uh, necessarily like, um, a, you know, like a, how would you say it? Um, a punishment, uh, but like it's to allow breathing room for um, us to um, uh, do what we need to do. And yes, I agree with Eric very much that I really I really don't want the city to be taking control of what we should be taking control of. I have a quick question. What is such the importance of the title? Why not just the work? Why are we so, if, if she wants to still work in the same capacity, why is the title so important that we can't say, okay, no longer because of whatever reason are you going to be called this, but you're still on and you can still work with this. Or if you're not, if somehow the city decides to remove her, if the heart's in the right place, why are we, why would that information go away or help go away? We could still do the same thing. We're working with the citizens every day. I don't understand it. Uh, this this title throwing around thing sounds like a power trip and it sounds like ego. And ego is, I mean, it's not helpful it, because it, it's always about me. And now we got to wait a little longer so it can continue to be about me. I would like to counter that just to remind everyone that Amel has been the chair for not even 14 days or 14 days today, but she has been doing the work of the chair for eight months. Yep. So she has been doing that without the title for a long time. So I don't, I, I don't think it's fair to suggest that uh, she would be doing it for the title. Well, then what's the difference is my question. 
What's the difference? If she's been doing it the whole time, why does it matter? Why are we taking that as something we're going to risk possibly stirring up a situation that's worse if that's been the case? It doesn't even make sense. It really doesn't. Yeah, I just want to, just like I said before, I want to avoid just having the city come back in because if they come back in, we're going to be in more trouble than we're in right now. If they have to come involve themselves again, it's going to look way worse than it is because I I highly believe that they didn't want to take the vote that they took this morning. They, they, they were close to just saying, no, she's off. I agree. They were very close until we said things like, hey, let us handle it on our own. Let us do it. So now we have this meeting. And we stay at the status quo, they're gonna they they're gonna spray the wings to again and swoop in. Agreed. They expected us you to do a response. I, I, I just want to something based upon kind of the conversation here the last five minutes. So the the TRC does not have the authority to remove or appoint a member. Mm -hmm. Okay. I I think that because you choose who your chair and vice chair are you could possibly um, maybe suspend the, the title of chair, but I don't think that can be associated with a person because that's not really in your purview to suspend a person. That would right. be the city council. Right. So I just want to clarify that because in the last five minutes, it's kind of been intermingled and I'm not sure quite what you're saying. So I thought I would just make it clear yeah, uh, for me, if I need to rephrase it, but it was that, um, that I wanted to make a motion to suspend the title of chair from Amel Ali. Okay. Thank you, Steph. Any other um, comments or thoughts on this? I think we should move forward with the vote. Okay. Um, did we already get a second for this vote? I didn't hear yeah. one. I'll second it. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, uh, Commissioner Daniel. Yes. Commissioner Dillard. I feel like I have to abstain from this vote. Um, I'm trying to pull up your bylaws. I think in the bylaws, it says that if you abstain, you have to give the reason why, like for a conflict or what? Oh, that's let me see here. Okay. Just bit. Yeah, it says a majority vote is required for adoption of any motion. Voting will be by roll call. Every member of the commission, including the chair, is required to cast a vote upon each motion. A member who abstains shall state the reasons for the abstention. So you're saying I have to say why I'm abstaining? That's per that's per your bylaws. So I mean, those are the bylaws you adopted as a committee. I'm abstaining because I just feel like. I am abstaining because I feel like I do not have enough information. Is that sufficient? Okay, uh, Commissioner Gathua? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Nobis? Yes, but I just wanna say I'm, I'm saying yes because I think it's in the best interest for uh, people's mental health and um, to allow uh, the TRC to make um, a proper decision. Um, and so I, I, it's not coming from, um, this is coming from a, a place of, of caring about what's going on. Uh, Commissioner Rivera. I'll uh, remind my fellow commissioners that we have the opportunity to be in communication with city council. You know, I had productive conversations with individual counselors throughout this week and I think was able to 
um, get them to think along lines of restorative justice and also allow us to have these opportunities to talk. Um, so it's not a given that they will decide for us at their next vote, but we also have the power to um, to tend to those uh, conversations and, and, and have them see why we think it's important for a suspension and not a removal. I vote yes. Okay, and Commissioner Traore. Yes. Okay, motion passes seven zero. Um, seven. Yeah, well, I'm still, I'm still. Yeah, but it still passed seven zero. Oh, you just want me to state on the record one up. So, okay, I can do that yeah. <laughs> with one person abstaining. Okay. Um. So, do we do we want to continue talking on this topic? Anyone else have anything else? I, I think, think we, we can. Still, move. I, think I don't know that we have more. I, I need people need to do more. Yeah, okay. Go past this. All right. Uh, we're going to move on to uh, number nine, the American Rescue Plan Act, um, Johnson County Directs Assistance Program and Excluded Workers. Um, we will first move to public comment. Um, that is going to be um, online, Zoom. She had a hand up for last night. So uh, sure. And we can go ahead with Tara McGovern. She. Mm. she had a hand up I'm not sure if it's for the same thing or not. That makes sense. Okay. Hi. Uh, I was actually commenting on what you just voted on, so I think that my comment is no longer valid. Okay. Thank you very much. I think that if you have the opportunity, I know that Dr. Ragland has been waiting to speak as well, and I think that he deserves to be heard. Thank you for that. Um, we are on number nine, so if Dr. Ragland would like to speak on that, he can certainly go ahead. Yeah, if you click the raise hand button, I just hadn't seen one. I hadn't seen it either. I don't think we always oh, I didn't see oh, it. Not weird. Oh, nope, I don't want to do that. The wrong one. Yeah, just click the, the, the X, the button, cancel. So we don't know the now. Just do cancel. Yeah. Yeah. Are we done with public? Um, public comments, one last time. Anyone want to comment on this number nine excluded workers? If not, we'll move to um, everyone in the audience. Anyone want to make public comment? Uh, it's oh, it's work. number nine excluded workers. Yeah. Okay, so um, it's the American Rescue Plan Act funds. Okay, yep. thank you. Um, I'd just like to say that um, Johnson County um, allocated $2 million to the American Rescue Plan along with Iowa City, City of Iowa City Council. Um, we collaborated. They gave $1.5 million where there, we had enough funding for 2,500 people. Um, Johnson County, when they did the lottery, Johnson County um, $199,000 was used. There was $800 left. And then Iowa City money kicked in and uh, there was only a certain amount of Iowa City people's, Iowa City residents. And so Iowa City only covered those people. So people did get left out. But I do want to let you know that uh, the excluded workers already know that we did our part. We allocated $2 million and it was all but $800 was used for that funding. Thank you. Anyone else want to make public comment about this topic? My name is Oliver, longtime Iowa City resident. Um, <clears throat> I would like to add that people are left out specifically because the Board of Supervisors chose not to specifically allocate funds to people who were left out, instead made it a general lottery, and the excluded workers came up and tried many, many, many times to make it a more streamlined process. And they spoke in front of them many times. Um, I just wanted that to be clear and on the record that that is actually what happened. Thank you. Anyone else with public comments? Okay, we'll move to commissioners. Um, is there someone, I'm sorry, go ahead, Noah. Oh, you can hear me, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> All right. All right. I also just wanted to repeat that uh, uh, Roy Sand, the uh, county could have put in a lot more than $2 million, and the school workers repeatedly asked for you to put in a lot more than $2 million, and it also didn't have to be a lottery. So, Johnson County 
is on it is their fault it's i it, don't, i'm not saying it's not obviously faults as well because they also could have not done the lottery and put in a lot more money than they did and they should have but it is honestly equally both your fault and the city's fault don't try to say it's, it's not our fault because it is your fault you chose to not put in more than two million and you chose to do the lottery thank you thank you anyone else want to give public comment Okay, we'll move to oh, commission. Oh, sorry. I'll just uh, remind. Um, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Okay, we're moving mm -hmm. to commissioners. <laughs> sorry. Um, I, uh, so, you know, our at our last meeting on uh, July twenty first, we did make a recommendation to city council. Um, uh, last week, I followed up with an email to all of you um, with a, a, a form letter um, and a list of emails um, of those elected officials throughout our county. Um, so there is more conversation to be had um, if you are able to to pick up those conversations moving forward. Thank you, Kevo. Is there any other comments from commissioners? Yeah. Um, when we passed that resolution, um, I went to the Catholic Worker House and um, I went and talked about the resolution that we passed. And usually every weekend I go and do some volunteer work at the Catholic Worker House or go over and help with something or give a speech about something to help the undocumented people understand the process. And one thing I would say officially um, is a lot of blame game going on about who didn't fund, who didn't fund, where the technicality came from the Iowa City side, to be honest with you. They said that people lived outside of different areas and things like that. Unfortunately, this past weekend, um, I haven't been able to go check on the excluded workers because of, you know, the events of the last days. So I'm going to make it my mission to go and check. And the next meeting that we have, I will have more definitive report. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, I just want to say thank you to Commissioners Rivera and also Commissioner Harris for coming to the event uh, last weekend at the Excluder Worker House, um, and also for helping to put that together. Um, so we got to sit with some of city council and also hear the stories of some that won the lottery, but also for more that did not, and were still hurting and looking for answers. Uh, definitely some heartbreaking things to listen to. And to all of you, if any of you do end up hearing this recording or hear anything about the actual meeting tonight. I just want to say, I uh, hope you don't feel that we tried to diminish talking about you in any way. I do still wholeheartedly believe that all the remaining 319 should be funded. And I do wish that there had been more funding for everyone that was truly in need and applied. But fortunately, I would just don't have, I just don't have more today. But I just want to thank you again for going to the city council meetings all the other public officials meetings and our meetings too, and pushing us to make sure that we abide by the actual promise we made to you to help you fight. That I yield. Thank you. Any other comments from commissioners? I move that we go on to the next one. All right, um, agenda item number 10, follow up on a proclamation led by Commissioner Novus. Would you like to go and talk about this Sakawas? Yes. Um, so as you can see, that, that's the proclamation that the Sioux City um, City Council uh, <clears throat> uh, went off of. And um, I was hoping we could adopt uh, that something like that um, uh, and move forward uh, for this year. Thank you so much for putting this together and connecting us with this. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, on this one, uh, Commissioner Novus, just want to thank you uh, for inviting me to the event last week to hear more about the history of homicides, but also Indigenous peoples going missing. Uh, it's very eye opening. I knew that it was a problem, but really hearing more of the true extent and the history behind it and the lack of definitive statistics because of how little groups in power have tried to care about it. It's really hurt to hear. And 
I'm sure it was harder for you to listen to, but want to thank you for still holding the event and holding the panel and for taking the questions that myself and other attendees had asked and bringing them forward. So with that, I just want to say when it comes to the proclamation, after hearing more last week, especially, I'm definitely in favor of the recommendation. Well, thank you. Yeah, uh, that's that's really nice to hear. Um, it's why I'm on this commission because uh, of the erasure and um, misrepresentation that indigenous peoples face. So um, it's literally my job. So but thank you so much. And I'm glad that we uh, can hopefully adopt this. Do we need to do a vote to adopt this or? I, I was wondering if we, um, I, I love, I, I mean, I think that this is um, so well written. I, I wonder if, I mean, um, we could still spend a little bit of time personalizing or like localizing it to our context, right? We have a written land yes, acknowledgement yes. that specifically yeah. calls out specific native and indigenous peoples here. And so I wonder if um, we think that it's appropriate to add, you know, another line saying or incorporating some of the language from our land acknowledgement um, because it, there is context, right? There's a reason that we're talking about indigenous people here. Um, and we, we read that land acknowledgement at the very beginning. So that, I mean, that has to also be in our reasoning for this. Um, I sorry, my is slow. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I want to defer to you in terms of oh. the language in here as well. Yeah, no, I'd be happy to personalize it. I kind of assumed we would. Um, so like, I just, that would be like, I guess, um, the template, you know, so that's our template and, mm -hmm. um, I would be happy to, to work on personalizing it for us. So I can, I can do that. Um, and then, um, update people, um, on it and then maybe we can vote on it or I don't even know if we have to vote on it. I think Stephanie said that, um, or I don't remember, there's some rules about this, I, right, right, Stephanie? Um, no, I don't think there's really any rules. It's just it just has to be presented to the city clerk within a X amount of days before a city council meeting. But when, once you have the draft the way you want it, um, just let me know and I can send you the template that the city council uses for proclamations. Okay. Oh, okay. So we'll just um, vote as a TRC to then present it to the city council. I guess that would be the process. I mean, you can vote on it when it gets closer in time if you want, but if there appears to be general consensus, I mean, I guess a vote is just kind of up to you guys what you feel comfortable with. Oh, yes. okay. And one question that I have, Sikawas, is are, are, um, are we presenting this for May 2nd next year? Um, yes. Okay. So Great. We have a lot of time. <laughs> do, you, do you need any help with this? Sure. Yeah, Other I would love it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so I can put together a Google Doc and share it with with the with the whole group. Maybe, uh, and I think it'd be better if you send it to Steph and then she sends it to us. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll send it to Steph. Awesome. Did we have anything else for this? If not, then we'll just move on to commissioner announcements. Um, first, we'll start with Steph. I just wanted to say one thing. So I'm going to check with communications, but um, just the um, community member who asked about the transcripts, mm -hmm. I, I kind of think on Zoom that there's transcripts that are created as part of Zoom. And so if you don't mind, if you um, before you leave, if you could just give me your address and or not address, your email address, and I can follow up with communications to see if they can work with you on getting you those transcripts from Zoom. Mm -hmm. I, I request would I think benefit everyone if the, the transcripts could make, be made easily accessible on the website? Because I'm just envisioning, you know, some total badass from another community moving to Iowa City because they hear such great things about Iowa City and how they're going to be here. Mm -hmm. And then they want to get involved, but the TRC Commission has been doing such great work for so long, so many hours. There's no way for anyone to understand how it became a good thing. But once that person is able to play, we need to have a million questions. Yeah. Yeah. Who said what and why did this happen? But I don't want to take up your time. 
So please make it available to the public on the website that yeah, I can I can do that. But I having seen some of them in the past, just so you know, I mean, they, they can run two, three hundred pages. So it, it's not a condensed transcript. So I just want to make sure. But we can I'll talk to communications. And if they can do that, then we'll get them linked to the website. You have anything else, Stephanie? I'm sorry. No. OK, commissioner announcements. Um. I just want to say something. Um, even some people on this commission and some people in this room, I went rounds and rounds and back and forth. We just need to find some peace and we need to stop the infighting. But with that, I yield. Me, I just want to take a second to, is anyone here tonight or again, on Zoom, that has ever felt wronged by anything I've done in my capacity as a commissioner or outside of that, please let me know so we can have a conversation about it. I would rather that than it fester or get worse. And um, the next thing I'd like to say is, Mel, if you do hear this or anyone does report it to you about what happened tonight, I just want to make sure you do understand that I don't have any hate in my heart for you none whatsoever the reason again i kept repeating how long we've known each other is to make sure that people know that i'm not just going to toss you to the side in some way like you can't still be a part of the community i don't believe that so i just hope that we're able to find a better consensus sometime in these next like, you know, seven to 10 days, whatever it is. But I just want to be sure that we can all move forward as a community. And with that, I yield. Um, if anyone would like to kind of dip their toe into understanding more about restorative justice, a lot of my initial learning came from this book, The Little Book of Restorative Justice by Howard Zare. Um, it's a quick read and I think pretty easily digestible and I think is a great access point. Um, thanks. Um, I would... First, I want to thank everyone in this room, um, commissioners and everyone listening in um, just for um, helping us uh, create this space today of tough discussions. And um, I really respect everyone now for really trying to listen to everyone um, as we have had these conversations today. Um, I definitely look forward to continuing this work and working with everyone. And I just uh, I just feel very grateful to be a part of this commission and part of this movement in this community. Um, so I'd like to take this opportunity to um, say, I've been very honored to be on this commission. Um, the events of the past week, well, actually, let me start. Let me start this off the right way, the way I would wanna start it. Um, Roy San, I accept your apology and I apologize for calling you a bully this morning. I think what happened on Tuesday really impacted me in a way that you couldn't possibly understand. So I apologize and I accept your apology. And that goes for everyone that was with you. I like it's water under the bridge as far as I'm concerned. Um, this week has been very trying for me. Um, and in, in on top of everything, uh, my health has just, I'm stepping down after this meeting. Um, I'm stepping down from the commission. I need to focus on my health and uh, try to figure out where some of that hurt came from this morning. Because, you know, I grew up a little fat black girl and bullies were just a part of life. And I feel I, I labeled you, um, but it wasn't you. It was just like trauma that I've never worked through. Um, and uh, I, have, I have an illness that eventually one day I may not be able to walk and I may not be able to talk and I may not be able to see. And I'm going to spend time um, working on restorative justice and uh, healing. But I think the role that I'm, like this position on the TRC 
would be better served going to someone in the community who was possibly healthier, but also this today and earlier this week, we've heard a lot of people say they want to see um, some older people on this commission. And, you know, I, I think there, there's something to that. Um, are we erasing um, seniors for like, and <laughs> so I'm stepping down and I really hope someone, um, a community elder takes my place. And I really, I'm going to be supporting uh, the work of the commission, but I, I'm, this will be my last meeting. And I just want to thank everyone for uh, putting up with me and, um, and just hanging in there and really supporting each other. Thanks, Commissioner Johnson. And I hope for nothing but the best with you. I hope everything is well. And thank you for your time. And thank all of you. And at the end of the day, nothing, none of this should be personal. So I hope that we can hopefully grow from this and continue to keep moving forward and doing what we should be doing for our community. And that's making it better. But definitely a uh, special sense of care that I hope for nothing but the best with you. And I hope everything is well. Daphne, it has been a joy working with you as a fellow commissioner and knowing you and the connection we have made. I know we shall continue working together in the community to make our Iowa City a better place. Thank you. And I know I can always pick up the phone or email or whichever form of communication. Or just come downstairs. <laughs> yes. Oh, thank you for remember <laughs> reminding me of that. You're just downstairs. Thank you. Uh, I wish to thank everybody. It has been, I don't want to use the word tomatoes, but it has been challenging. Thank you, everybody, for all the difficult conversations that we have had. I wish I could assure everybody it will be okay, but I really can't make such a promise. We'll continue struggling uh, as we move along, fighting racial oppression. So some of it is fighting among the TRC, or let me not use the word fighting. Let me use disagreement. <laughs> let me use that. Let me rephrase that. And even among the communities, and I know um, I've said that again, but I'm repeating. So thank you. That's what I've been to say for everybody, even the public, for uh, going there. It's tough. My other point I believe, and I'm going to use the word, the two words, I believe the victims, and this is intended, the victims and the survivors of the hurt, those who have been hurt, I believe you. by especially the words on the clip that is in the public domain. I am referring to that because that is what is out there. I am sorry and I believe you. And also thank you, even as it hurts, you have still been part of this process of dealing with it and moving to get to the other side where we are working on creating a light. Thank you. I yield. Anyone else? Motion to adjourn. I second. Well, I still can't. Okay. No moved. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs>